Hello everybody, it's David Perlmutter from Quantum Listing and I am here today with Sarah Malcolm, Chief Operating Officer of the Content Funnel and Amanda Bowen, who is the Director of Business Development for the Content Funnel. So we have a Content Funnel power extravaganza. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having us. Well, thank Happy you guys to be here thank you. for being here. I mean, your topic today is a really important one. Uh, and I will give the folks at the Content Funnel 100% of the credit for the catchy headline, which is Social Media, Is It Really Worth It? And I sure hope it is because I spend a lot of time <laughs> using it um, <laughs> uh, the simple answer is yes and that's all of our webinar today right no okay thanks everybody <laughs> see you next time uh, and th their tagline was uh, uh, it's a necessity not an afterthought so just to give you a hint of where we're going today um, so you guys both work at the content funnel or the Content Funnel works for both of you, uh, mm -hmm. and you are part of a larger organization uh, mm -hmm. that Michael Beckerman has ingeniously put together. And so maybe you know, let's start out with just letting people know how those different pieces fit together and work together to create a great experience for all the different constituencies that you serve. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the news funnel, they're the number one news aggregator for the uh, real estate industry, uh, which is pretty cool. So if you're looking for news specific to what you're interested in, industrial, office, residential, multifamily, whatever it may be, retail, um, they will uh, customize the news specifically for you. And we have a ton of subscribers on there. Um, I would say almost everyone in the industry. And um, and then CRE Tech is the number one uh, tech event bringing together um, technology and innovation to the commercial real estate industry. So um, we have a directory online of all the latest and greatest uh, tech companies and innovation solutions. Uh, we've, they've got amazing content daily on the site, kind of educating everybody on the latest and greatest, and um, as well as the largest event in the theory uh, prop tech space. And um, how we work with them is we create the content and then we can distribute it to our sister companies or other brands. So, which is um, why we all work together so well. Because, you know, normally agency doesn't have access to distribution and normally distribution sites don't have access to an agency. So that's kind of how we all work together, which is awesome. And not only does it work together like that, but uh, the, like the news funnel has this great feed that anybody can put on their website or their blog, which uh, Quantum Listing does, which uh, gives the latest commercial real estate news uh, through an RSS mm -hmm. feed, which is awesome. Uh, you can post your events, your blog posts to the yep. uh, news funnel, uh, but what, Amanda and Sarah really do so well is for those of us that don't have the time, interest, or ability, but still understand the importance of creating a presence for yourself, uh, whether it's a blog or social media or emailing, uh, they can take the burden off of you uh, and, and yeah. provide great solutions for that. So. Yes, turnkey solutions for sure. Yeah. So thanks for thanks for thanks for the commercial. Hey, yeah. You know, uh, thanks for <laughs> for being so supportive of me. Michael Beckerman was the first guy in commercial real estate technology and the whole thing that I reached out to me uh, way in the beginning, and um, so uh, he forever will hold a, a special place in in my heart. And you guys have been so supportive <laughs> ever since. So yeah, anything I can do to, uh, you know, help you guys. Plus, you're all really nice and Thank you. great to talk with. So <laughs> we appreciate it. Thank so, you. Uh, let's get the ball rolling. Um, okay. 
Well, I, I mean, actually, you know, you're both younger than me, but you know, you're probably you know born with cell phones in your hands the way my kids were. They're, you know, like, yeah, no, I didn't have a cell phone. I think until college. Yeah. So I'm I'm turning forty next month. So yeah, we grew up with I'm not, beepers. Not feeling super. Yeah, beepers. That's what we grew up with. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think uh, when my first <laughs> son was born, my uh, before my wife was giving birth, that's that's the only time I ever had a beeper. But yeah. So yeah. I mean, if, 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 if any if anyone else in the comments can please say that you also grew up a beeper, so I'm not feeling so old right now. That'd be yeah. awesome. <laughs> so look, Howard Klein, who's on the call, is a, an alta cocker like me. Uh, that's a colloquial expression, which I'll let you look up on the internet for yourself. Um, I mean, so we were definitely not born with these devices and we're without social media. Um, how did you guys, you know, first, you know, come to social media? How did you get good at social media? Uh, how did you make it, you know, your careers? Well, I started, so I was a musician a long, long time ago. I went to Berklee College of Music and I started before it was called social media or even online marketing, but I was joining these communities online to promote myself. And so um, it was just a way to kind of network with folks and, um, you know, share my music. And I um, just got really good at it. And um, I had no money. So that was helpful. So when you have no money and you kind of have to really figure it out and teach yourself how to code websites and Photoshop and video editing and, you know, from really A to Z from, you know, the digital suite, you just, you know, you become good at it. So I started that and I worked myself up to, um, funny enough, being number one on the digital charts in Australia. And then if anybody remembers the site mp3.com, I also um, was number one on that as well. And um, it was all through just online networking, um, you know, making relationships, talking with, you know, folks who had, you know, shared interests that I did. And, and it really just grew from there. And then my friends who were in the industry said, hey, can you start doing this for me? And then it just kind of grew from there. Then it was businesses and then it was consulting. And then it was in 2009, 2010, I had a conversation with Mike Kerchival at ICSC and said, hey, I'm, this is my portfolio. I'm really looking to do this like as a real job. And, um, I, you know, showed him all of my work and he said, oh my gosh, we're actually looking for somebody to do this for us. And I was shocked because I thought ICSC, you know, they're just so traditional. I didn't expect that from them, which I was pleasantly surprised. And um, I came to work with them. And that's when I really kind of dipped my toe into the real estate space. I had a ton of retail background and I, I grew up in the real estate because um, my family was in the business. Um, but that's really when I entered the space and when I started building all of these online relationships. So I think Howard was, was one of them that I met a long time ago on Twitter, um, as well as some of the staples online. So. And my story is a little bit different, which maybe other people, it's interesting, Sarah and I are kind of on opposite spectrums. I was like never into social media, and I very much refused to have a Facebook account when it came out. And I was long past college, and all of my professional friends were like, aren't you on Facebook? And I was like, absolutely not. So it took me a long time, and I had another career in um, international business before this that we just weren't involved in the social media space. And then after I got out of that career, I decided that I wanted to get into real estate. So I actually got into real estate as a residential broker. And that's when I realized that I really had to learn social media. So I started doing social media. I took training courses on it. I was like trying to get as much information as I could about how to do this because it was such a big part of getting business of any business. If you're not online, like you don't really exist. And so I've known Sarah for many years and she we actually, actually went to college I, together. <laughs> yeah. So I, so we were, I was doing all of this stuff on social media. I was, you know, doing multiple platforms. I was doing videos. Um, I was in it all the way. And she said, 
she noticed what I was doing and was like, wow, with your business background and your knowledge now of social media, I think you could be a really good fit for the content funnel and, and what we're trying to do. And so I've actually, I'm actually a social media convert myself, which I think really does you know, make me a good fit for this role because I really did grow my business and I actually got a job out of what I was doing on social media. So, you know, it does work. And that's yep. how, that's how, that's why we're sitting here today. Yep. And then we, and then we're both now at the content funnel, which we love what we do. It's really like, it's just, we're both kind of exactly in the space that we want to be in. So it couldn't be yep. better. That is, uh, Amazing. So what I hear here that is very encouraging to for everybody is that you don't need to be born into social media. That you can be, you can with a little work you can thrust, learn it. thrust yourself mm -hmm. into it and, and be uh, right up there with uh, everybody else. Right. And 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 honestly, you don't. I mean, uh, you can is, learn it or you can outsource it. Um, so I mean, those are really the right. two options. So, yeah. What do you hear most from people in commercial real estate about social media? Are they intimidated by it? They embrace it? What do you, what, what's, you've got your finger on the pulse. What do you see? Well, there's definitely two sides um, to that coin. I'll speak a little bit on both of them, which is Wait, on the I one side, you have our client. Audio gone. Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? 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 Oh, uh, I, I, I stopped being able to hear, so. Okay, can hear we can now? hear you. I can hear you. Okay. So, I'm in the call, but I can hear you. I got to show you all proof and everything. I talked to her and got it all set up. Mm -hmm. she, 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 she. I think um, if someone could put their phone on mute, that would be great. I think we can hear a conversation on the side. Okay, yeah. It's really uh, confusing me because. Um, okay, I think I got it. Okay, perfect. Okay, sorry about that, everyone. Okay. No problem, no problem. So, um, what I was saying was I, I can speak to two sides of the question of what I hear most about um, what the feedback is on social media. And honestly, from on the client side, um, they are always really surprised at you know, how quickly we're able to scale their accounts and really grow and start to create like a brand and that people start talking about their social media and commenting to them, hey, I saw this or I saw your blog post or and sort of like what an impact it has so quickly. Um, you know, it definitely takes time to, to build. But when you start being consistent with your efforts on social media, like people really do pay attention because everyone's on social media. So that's what I hear, you know, from our clients is they're sort of blown away by the impact that it has. And then they're like, wow, this really is a tool that every company needs. Um, but on the other side of people who aren't our clients, whenever I'm on sales calls, you know, what I really hear is people sort of, they, they, they hear that you're supposed to have social media, they understand that it's important, but they don't believe that it's important. And they're, you know, the people I'm talking to are always like, well, what can you send me? What can you give me? Because I have to present this to somebody else, the decision makers, the budget, you know, within budgeting, is there a place for these services? Um, because they sort of don't see them as essential. Um, and that, you know, we have put together resources for our clients to use and also um, for me to use, which is, you know, we've done case a case study where we can show you the impact that, you know, our work has on a brand. And we've done a benchmark report, which demonstrates how anybody who's, you know, who's out there, who's doing well, is, you know, living and breathing on social media, and they're on multiple platforms. Mm -hmm. And for sure, those people have either outsourced it, or they pay someone full time to do it in house, because it mm -hmm. is 100% a very demanding full time role. Yeah, it is. And the one thing I hear often is like, Okay, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to start it. Whether there are clients, I mean, most, I mean, let's talk about folks that aren't our clients right now. So, you know, they're like, okay, I'm going to start this. I'm going to do this. Um, and then it really gets put to the back burner. And they're like, okay, now I'm, I'm going to, you know, start posting. I'll like send a tweet out or I'll post something on Instagram or I'll post something on Facebook or I'm going to, I'm going to start a blog. And it just isn't, they're not sticking with it because there's, 
you know, 800 other things in their life they have to take care of. And, you know, it's hard to dedicate time to, you know, something like this, because you're, you're really focusing on building your brand or your company's brand. And it's a lot of work. You know, you can't just send out one tweet and be like, okay, I'm on social, we're good. Now let's, let's have everybody kind of, you know, flow in, where's all the leads, right? I mean, David, you know that, like, you can't, yeah. It's something that you put a lot of effort into and you have to continually do it for a long time to, to see that return. Right. Absolutely. One of the uh, great uh, blogs that I read is by a marketing guy named Mark Schaefer. And uh, he, one of the things he stresses over and over again is uh, what Amanda said right at the beginning uh, there, which is consistency is key. Uh, you can't just uh, you know tweet once and and you know expect a following of ten thousand legitimate non bot people. <laughs> uh, and it takes effort, and you know you have to be a human being, and uh, you know let people. I mean, it's social media. It's not just advertising. It's uh, right. You know, there's an incumbent. Um, interaction uh, that comes with it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's all about relationships and building that relationship. You know, we always uh, we always talk about that because, you know, everyone's like, what is the, you know, why are, why should I be spending so much time on social media? And you're like, well, it's the same as having a website. So if you don't believe in having a website, I, I guess you don't want social, but if you're looking and you're trying to, you know, investigate a company or a person, we, I mean, that's what you do. If you want to look up somebody, you automatically go to Google and search them, right? Yeah. And if they're not on social and they don't have a website, you're like, they they must be like really small potatoes or not real or, you know, insignificant. And, and, and that might be a completely wrong assumption, but that's what's happening. That's, it's, like, it's all about, it's, it's a perception. And, and people also, they be, before they go into business with you, they, they want to have like a heads up before you or you a crazy person? Are you great to work with? Are you likable? Are you, you know, are you doing the type of deals that they want to be interested in doing deals with you? Like, it's just, it's almost like your online resume is your brand. And, and, mm -hmm. you know, that's just one of the reasons why you need to have right. it. Are you, are you savvy enough to have a good social media, um, you know, mm -hmm. profile? Are you savvy enough to be out there and really, you know, having all those balls in the air, all those platforms, all those things working that when people search you, they find you. And not only do they find yeah. you, but they tell what you're about. Yeah, yeah. nobody yeah. loves to be sold to. I mean, you know, those telemarketing yeah. calls you get at dinner, uh, you just want to hang up and, you know, where you'll never buy from that company ever. Um, yeah. So, it's, yeah. It's very much like if you're at a golf game, right? If you're, if you're taking someone out for a golf game or if you're at a party are you immediately going to be like, okay, so let's talk about this deal, right? Or no, you're going to talk about life. You're going to talk about a movie you just saw. You're going to talk about an article you read. Just, you know, what, whatever the topic is, you're not going to jump right into the deal, right? So it's like you need to, like, warm people up and, and make those relationships, and, and that's what social media is about. Yeah, so we have a great question here from Philip Sessions, uh, and he wants to know what platforms – are best and I'm going to say that that's not a simple answer but that you've got the two best people in the world to uh, <laughs> question so I love this question I get it all the time and um, you know and you don't have to take my word for it we have actually a benchmark report that's a hundred percent free um, you can download it at contentfunnel.com it has a sampling of um, all the different sectors of commercial real estate and what platforms they're using, how many followers they have, how they're using Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. It's an amazing report. It's something um, that we've been wanting to do for a while. So, and again, it's totally free. You just have to go into the contentfunnel.com, go into resources tab and go into reports. And um, you can just download that for free. So, um, but, so I can kind of go through the platforms and how we're seeing everybody use them. So LinkedIn is really a networking tool and a way to, it's, it's really your online uh, resume. And it's a way to kind of build your brand from a B2B standpoint. And it's a great way to you know, have conversations back and forth really on, um, 
uh, offline. So that's really happening more in like the private message um, scenario on LinkedIn, and and then also comments on um, whatever content you're sharing. So so LinkedIn's a great way to uh, really establish yourself um, from your professional brand. Twitter is great for uh, sharing information, but even better for having the online dialogue with several people at once. So um, Linda's really great at this. She, um, you know, she'll put something out and she'll tag several people and then we'll all chime in and start having a conversation about a specific topic. So it's a great way to, um, to again, have that like back and forth conversation and really building those online relationships. Um, Twitter was where I met Howard, where I met Linda, um, where I've met most of my commercial real estate online connections was through Twitter. Um, so that's still a definite, you know, people, some people are saying Twitter is dying. That's not true. Um, our industry at least is still on it. And, um, and it's more the middle-aged folks, believe it or not. <laughs> um, it is. So okay. it's not, you know, and then, um, Facebook is definitely a great place. Um, our industry is on that and, uh, all of our clients are using it and finding, um, a lot of success, especially when using paid ads great way to target specific audience and uh, reach people that you want to reach rather than, you know, some random 13 year old um, on Facebook. So I guess I don't think 13 year olds are even on Facebook anymore, but um, <laughs> oh, on Instagram, but whoever, <laughs> right. They are on Instagram. <laughs> so, um, but you can, it is great to get specific. And, and also what does really well on Facebook is the behind the scenes of what you do. Um, we're seeing that perform really well on Facebook. And then Instagram is, I, I, I hear this all the time. You're like, do I really need to be on Instagram? And we're finding um, from our clients, as well as our own Instagram accounts, um, that it's performing the best organically. And what I mean by that is we are, we're not using paid ads. Um, at least we, you can use paid ads, but when we're not using paid ads, that's, it's still getting the highest engagement out of any platform, like 40% better than any other platform on Instagram. Oh, um, the website, someone said it's, uh, the content funnel here. I'll type it in to everybody. Um, content funnel. I'm adding this into the notes. Yeah. I gotta say that this is a very engaged, uh, group questions and comments are awesome uh and howard uh klein brings up that uh, linkedin is going to be live streaming shortly that they're going to start uh that service. oh boy didn't know that <laughs> and uh andreas sunny from uh, cre collaborative uh distribution partner of ours tells us that his instagram grows by itself uh it does and if you use like the correct hashtags and you're following the right people and you're engaging with the right people, which is something else that we do. We've nailed down exactly who you're supposed to be engaging with. And, um, and we engage with those folks to make sure that you're, you know, growing as fast as possible. The last thing you want to do is start, um, you know, an online presence and just let it sit there. You have to be, you know, connecting with the who's who it's just like in business. It's like when, you know, you want to talk to the people who, you know, already have the big audiences, so then you can leverage that, right? And so it's the same on social. And so that's what, you know, we do on a daily basis. Yeah, I know if right. and our, our social media friends are offline for a week, you know, a lot of us begin to get worried. <laughs> so uh, if you're gonna go away and you're on social media, just let your, your friends know first, please. You don't want the right. <laughs> yeah. So someone, someone just asked, what are the, some of the good industrial Instagram hashtags? And so industrial would be one of them, commercial real estate, hashtag CRE. The best way to kind of look um, what, um, how people are using um, hashtags on Instagram is to start with like the basics. So like use hashtag industrial. And then um, this is what a question from the comments. Yeah. So, so search hashtag industrial on Instagram and then, click on it and then see the top folks who are using the hashtags and mm -hmm. what other hashtags they're using. And on Instagram, when you search the hashtags, it'll actually tell you how many times it's been used. It's amazing. Wow. And you can follow those right. hashtags. 
That is the point of hashtags, is they're basically yes. little tiny search engines. So yes. while people they sometimes are. use them, I mean, sometimes people use them to say funny things, and I think it gets, we get lost in that, like that you're just supposed to do hashtag, you know, something silly, but they really are, when you're using them, hashtag CRE, hashtag, you know, commercial real estate, like it's, try searching it, and then you'll understand. Try using the search feature, right. put it in a hashtag, and use that, and then you'll understand what they're actually doing. Yeah. So when you see, like, like when you type in industrial, click on, it, it gives you top or recent. I always like to go to both, but if I'm looking to see what the top folks are using and how they're using it, click on, click on their profiles and look through their feed and say, okay, they're using industrial. Okay. They're using this. Okay. They're using commercial real estate. Okay. They're using hashtag CRE. And that's the best way to kind of formulate what hashtags you should be using. And when you use the right hashtag, your engagement goes flying through the roof. I just started um, an Instagram account for a client a few weeks ago. And just by using the correct hashtags, the engagement is like crazy. Okay. So. And so this is on Instagram. Is it applicable to Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, or is it really unique yes. to Instagram? Nope, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so you want to use hashtags for Twitter. You want to use them for Instagram. Instagram, you can get um, away with more hashtags because there's really no limit to how many you can use. But, you know, less is more. You don't want to, like, go crazy and fill up your entire, you know, thing with hashtags. So you just want it to be relevant and um, make sense with what you're posting. And then um, Twitter is the same. You want to make sure that you're using um, specific hashtags. Whoever, if you want people in commercial real estate to reach you and find you, you just have to use the hashtags, the correct hashtags. So if you're in retail, you want to make sure you use retail. If you want to use, you know, whatever industry you're in, you just want to make sure you're using the right ones. That's the key. Um, also LinkedIn, um, the hashtag usage isn't huge, but it's, still um it's still there and some folks are using it so i am still a big fan of using it um because those who you know understand hashtags they're the ones who are using it and they're savvy and, and you want to drive as much traffic to yourself as possible so it, it's kind of silly not to use it and right. then facebook facebook i would say is the same hashtag usage isn't huge but it's still there and it still works and it's still another way for people to find you and linkedin <laughs> is where I get most of my leads from my business, personally. But as you can see, there's so many different aspects of what we're talking about, which is why the content funnel exists. Because it's like, we are a small army that will handle all of these platforms for you that already know all this information. And so we can guide your brand. We can do all the necessary things for your brand. And I think that's why it's so, important that people realize that this is a very viable new way of advertising. It should be part of your marketing budget. You know, it should be part of your advertising outlook for 2019 for any year mm -hmm. going forward. It's, you know, you have to be doing this and it is a, mm -hmm. it is a huge undertaking to do social media. Right. Well. Yeah. And can I tell you how exciting it is for us? Because, you know, we only focus in real estate and, you know, there's a few influencers who we're ghostwriters, so we have NDAs with everybody, so we, you know, we let them take all the credit. But there's a few influencers that we have really, really catapulted to the top of commercial real estate to the point where they're getting on boards, they're getting deals, they're getting paid speaking opportunities. I mean, and they were like, I mean, they had zero online presence before. And so it's exciting to kind of see that transition and how you can actually build a brand and an influencer from scratch. Yeah. Um, we've had a couple of other really great comments and questions here. Uh, mm -hmm. One of our users wants, uh, members here wants to know, uh, oh. how many hashtags are too many? So that's a great question. So. Um, it really, I mean, so the best way to do it is kind of look at the other influencers. There's not a right or wrong answer to that. So, I mean, link, Twitter will give you, um, Twitter will give you, uh, there's character limitations, right? So you can only use so many. Um, you can use them within your sentence or you can use them at the end. If it may, I, um, I, you know, sometimes use them, if it makes sense, like if, if I'm, what I'm saying, if I'm talking about marketing, in my sentence, I'll put a hashtag in front of marketing. 
because I'm going to put that at the end anyway. If I'm talking about real estate, I'll put the two words together and hashtag it. So you can do it within a sentence or the end. That it really doesn't matter. So um, and then as far as how many. If you're going to do a bunch, do it at the end. Don't do a bunch of hashtags yeah. in the middle of a sentence. Just yeah. Right. It, it'll just be overwhelming. It's like, it's mm. like whatever the key words you want to highlight that are important in your sentence and that, um, that are used widely um, and, and that makes sense. Those are the ones that you want to, that you want to highlight and, and put a hashtag in front, if that makes sense. Yeah. At the end, you can, you can use a bunch of hashtags. Yeah. And, and so. you want to make sure the hashtags don't overwhelm the message you're trying to deliver. Uh, exactly. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, I think Facebook did a study where I think anything under a hundred, you know, characters did better than anything else. It was something like that. And, um, but it was, again, less is more. So you, so don't go crazy. Agree. Nobody wants to read a paragraph, yeah. a huge paragraph. Of online. hashtags. Yeah. I right. mean, think about when you're scrolling through your mm -hmm. feed or, you know, you just want like super digestible bits of information. So just think from the user standpoint that like everybody's on that page. And if they want to read more about you, then they'll go to your blog or right. your website. And uh, let's see, we have another uh, interesting comment, which I've noticed recently also from Melissa from SVN Desert Commercial uh, mentions that- Hey, Melissa. Uh, LinkedIn now makes suggestions on your hashtag use. use. Yeah. Uh, yep. <laughs> and that's what's LinkedIn. great about these platforms. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I said thanks, LinkedIn. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> that's the great thing about these um, <laughs> um, websites is they're constantly updating and they're adapting to help us be better on their platforms. So, and LinkedIn is definitely, definitely doing that. So uh, Kenton Johnson says sometimes it works out to use real hashtags to highlight important points in a list or a paragraph. Uh, I think that's a good point. Um, and hey, what else? Uh, I've never seen such an engaged uh, group of participants in a webinar. So uh, I think it's a real tribute to you, Sarah and Malcolm, and also maybe to uh, the anxiety that some of us have around social media um, and really wanting to you know, do it well and uh, be effective and, and have it sell us rather than... Well, I think people really want to know, like, does it work? Is it real? Um, because I feel like so many people have this idea that it, it is for kids, that it's like something that you do, you know, to post selfies. And that's just not the case. And the businesses that are absolutely killing it and growing, you know, just scaling to these huge, in these huge ways, they are on social media. Like, mm -hmm. and so it's so, and I, I feel like that's why people are always like, want to know more about social media because they're looking for that that proof, that evidence that it works. And it's all around you. Like it works. It is how, so much how you communicate your brand. It's so much how you talk to your customers, how you reach your clients. And it's, it's through these weird relationships that, that seem odd in the beginning, but then you're like, oh, I, I start following this company because I like their ads, or I start following this person because I like their, you know, their inspirational quotes. And then you, you, re you go look about, look up, look them up and you realize that they're into th other things or, you know, they're an industry leader. So you start following them because you're inspired by them and it leads to other things. It is a, mm -hmm. you know, it is a fire that grows as soon as you start it, but you have to start it and then you have to maintain. You yeah, have you to keep, keep adding the wood fuel. in the fire. Like yeah. You have, you have to. to keep adding fuel to the fire and that's where people fall down. And the other thing that is so important is that you do not have to become as a social media person, you know, there's ways to be on social media, even as a company, you don't have to, you know, be, you don't have to overshare, you don't have to be, you know, sort of too personal or unprofessional, like there's different ways to be on social media, just like there's different ways to be in the world. You don't mm -hmm. have to say, well, I don't like social media, because I don't want to be that way. And we certainly as a company, because our niche, our niche is real estate, it's all we do. And because we have individual personalized account managers for all of our clients, you know, we get your personality. We will procure your yeah. account to be 
how you want it. it you're not going to suddenly mm-hmm. be like this really loud or, you know, in your face company where you're like, that's not really, we want to have the, the feel, the tone, the texture that you want. And that's all doable on social media. It can be very in, individualized, you know, very personal. And I think it's important not to be scared away by bad examples of social media that you're like, oh my God, I would never want that to happen to me or my brand or my company. You know, like that's another reason why we make sure that we take care of your brand and, and grow mm-hmm. it with you in, in the tone that you want, you know, with, with the, yeah. with, with the features and all the things that you want it to be so that people really know your core values and also like what you do, what your services that you provide. Yeah. Well, exactly. everybody on this uh, webinar is a business person and business people generally will only do things over the long term if they make business sense. Uh, okay. Is there a way is there a return on investment in social media? How do you measure it? You know, what, what's a realistic expectation for uh, somebody who's you know, wanting to launch a social media campaign? Well, in the sh- there absolutely is ROI, but it is just like any other advertising that it's not, I can't say to you, if you do A and B, C is automatically going to happen in this amount of time. It is, it is advertising. And so it takes time and you have to keep putting your, you know, your message out there and then people, people grab it. But for the short term with, with clients and for anybody who's doing this, you know, you should, there are reporting tools, you know, um, there's Google Analytics. We give our clients reports every month on every single one of their platforms so that they mm-hmm. can see exactly what's working. And we take that information and use it for the next month. Wow, this, this right. post really, really performed well. People were really into it. Let's do more of that. Mm-hmm. So in the short term, we can show you it's working. We can 100% yeah. show you it's working. Your numbers will be growing, your interactions, all of these things. Mm-hmm. But in the long term, it is it, you work it, you work it, you work it, and then boom, you get that deal or you make that connection or, you know, and mm-hmm. there's your ROI. And like Sarah right. was saying earlier, it is relationship building that turns into deals like, mm-hmm. you know, she, as she mentioned, going to golf or taking a client to dinner or any of those things that you put in right. time with somebody where, you know, th- what is the ROI of those things? You know that eventually it's going to turn into something that you can, into money. you know, count. Yeah, yeah. into money. And and the, the thing is, is like, so if you're right now, whoever you're using to do your social media, um, whether it's a company, a person, they have, you, you have to ask for monthly analytics. You need to understand that what you're doing is working. And then once you see what's working, you put that on steroids. Because the last thing you want to do is be spending money or wasting your time. And so understanding how it's performing is essential. And But even before that, you should have goals and objectives. So what are your goals and objectives? What are you trying to achieve, whether it's with your brand, whether it's your personal brand, your company? What, what are those goals and objectives? for 2019 and how can you use social media to support those objectives, right? So, because if you're not working towards a goal, you're kind of wasting your time. And so that's where the ROI is. So if you're focused and you're, you know, have your eye on the prize, that's when you'll see the ROI of using social media. Mm -hmm. Because you will reach those, you will reach those goals and you will check Mm -hmm. them off and then, you, you will say, okay, what's the, where's the next place I want to go? Just like yeah. the brands and the people we've worked with who had zero presence and now they're, they're you know, getting paid. To it's speak crazy. Like, it's, you know, they, and, they've, yeah. they've gone up by level, level by level. They've, and they've and it's crazy to watch. Said, it's, crazy. it's crazy. It's crazy to watch how you put a strategy together and you execute and it works. And to the level of where these brands are now compared to where they were is, it's bananas. It's, it's bananas. Like it's, it's incredible. It's crazy that you can actually almost manufacture an influencer. You can, like you can do it. I mean, of course the influencer has to have the, the knowledge and credibility on their end, but as far as online, you can, you can build it like, and it's real. Right. So it's not, you're not, you know, putting in a hundred pounds of steel and getting out a hundred pounds of widgets, you know, 10 minutes later, this is (laughs) right. You're, that you're, yeah. 
investing in and working and nourishing and harvesting and responding mm-hmm. to and testing constantly and uh, you know nurturing it towards a, a positive result. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it starts to happen and then you're like, you know, you can, especially with our clients, I mean, sometimes they can have a single deal that more than, more than pays for what they invested into their, into their social yeah. media. Exactly. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's amazing the things, things that you don't think are going to happen on social media, the places that you reach are, you're just, you're like, wow, I never would have thought that, that I, that my company or that my personal brand would have made it that far. But it, it spreads far and wide. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we have a comment from one of our participants, and Kenton Johnson wants to know, do you work LinkedIn groups much? All the time, yes. So link, gr- so the great, play, the great thing about groups is, so, and this is on Facebook and LinkedIn, is, um, so the bad thing about these platforms is they're, they're pay to play now. So if you're a company and you're trying to post something, you're really not going to reach a lot of people unless you pay to play. However, if you post your content in groups, the, the folks in that group will see it. So it's a great way to bypass the um, pay to play uh, scenario and get eyeballs for what you're trying to um, get people to see. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So once again, it sounds like you know, you're building trust and relationships instead of just mm-hmm. selling all the time. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is like, so, and I should talk about that. If you're going into a group, you can't just, you know, put a listing in there and be like, contact me if you're interested. Right. <laughs> you have to spend time. Again, it goes back to that scenario. You're at a party and you just meet somebody. You're not going to hand them your card and be like, Hey, I got a listing. Let's go. Right. You're, you need to like, talk to them and have a conversation. It's work. Like you have to, you know, develop that relationship. So like some comment, like some of the posts people do make a comment here and there, you know, 80% of your content on that group should be sharing with that group and 20% can be your listings and whatever else you're selling. So um, we, we use the late night rule and, um, and that's, if you think about it, you know, when Justin Timberlake goes on to a Jimmy Fallon show you know, he's there 100% just to sell his album, right, or promote his movie, okay? But when he goes on the Jimmy Fallon show, Jimmy's like, hey, I saw you and Jessica Biel. I saw you guys were on vacation. I saw your little one. Oh, he's so cute. Um, you know, they play a game. It has nothing to do with why he's there, right? So he's really kind of, you know, he's entertaining. And he's, you know, working the crowd and what, whatever, you know, else he does. And so, and then at the end, he says, oh, by the way, you've got a new album. And he's like, oh, thanks for bringing that up. Like, and that is the only reason he is on that show. But they don't get to that until, you know, the end because they want it to feel like it's an organic sell and not such a hard sell because that's really what people want now. They don't want that hard sell anymore. It's, uh, yeah, look, there are, you can get anything you want at any time from mm-hmm. the internet. But what people, you know, are still fundamentally human and they crave experiences, they crave relationships, uh, and, and, and people's BS detectors are pretty damn good, too. So if they think yeah. you're not sincere, uh, you know, yeah. get blocked. I feel, I feel like this industry has better BS radar than anybody, yeah. specifically. So that was a good way to put that, David. Right. Um, Hashtag BS Radar. <laughs> <laughs> right. okay. I, I don't know if that's a, that's a hashtag or not, but right. let's give it a, a let's make it go viral. Have you ever had anything go viral? <laughs> I mean, what does it take for something to go viral? Um, that really like is not the goal in commercial real estate. I mean, commercial real estate is not as exciting as a cat or, you know, (laughs) other things that go viral. So, you know, I mean, it's just, your goal should not be to go viral in commercial real estate. It's just, it's unrealistic expectations. I hate to say that, but the key is making sure that you go viral within your network, within the people that you want to The key is to be known, be seen and be known. 
know, and, and the great thing yeah. is, is like, if you're a brand just in the world and you're trying to get known, that's really hard. But in our industry, it's so much easier because it's such a small industry that you can, you can get to know the, the key players, the key influencers and get in the conversation so fast. Also, it's not a pretentious group online. I mean, David, you know that. Like, if you reach out to really any of the key influencers, Koi, um, Koi Davidson, um, uh, Linda, Howard, Cl Linda Day Harrison, Howard Klein, Michael Beckerman, I mean, you, a a any of those folks that you reach out to that have an audience, um, they'll reply to you instantly. And that's unlike any other industry. Yeah. It really is. It really is great. So, but I just got to say, you, you you burst my my bubble, which was, you know, to have my really cool drone video of my shopping center go get a billion views. Oh, well. <laughs> so, yes. So, drone videos actually perform really, really, really well on social. So, we've done that for several clients. Yeah. And within our industry, they do really well. So, they don't have billions of views. But, you know, unless you're getting Justin Bieber hanging from a building. With a drone, I don't think you're going to get a lot. Can you the, the, you're right for me, please? You can. <laughs> yeah, let me let me have let me give let her me enough call time. my people. Give her enough yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That's great. Um, <laughs> let's see. Do we have? Uh, uh, we seem to have a chord from our, our commenters that uh, crassly commercial posts don't come close to great content. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, and, and, so, and also graphics. What do you think about graphics? How important are those? Important. So, yeah, important. At really, every post should have some sort of graphic attached to it. Yeah. I mean, that's mm -hmm. just that's just a given. It's called rich media, and it's there to catch someone's eye. And it just on all the platforms, it just statistically performs much better than than just a text post. So unless you're just going back and forth in a conversation that's different, but if you're sharing some sort of content, there needs to be an image related to it. And especially if you're building a brand, you want to keep repeating yeah. that brand. You know, you need to yeah. keep keep putting your, your logo, your tagline, whatever it is, it needs to be repeated again and again. And also people people read with their their eyes. I mean, they're, like with an image, an image, what does it say? What's the saying? An image uh, tells a thousand words or says a thousand words, whatever that, that – uh, yeah, yeah, and so that's what you know. You want people to see first to grab them in to read your post. Click on your link, go to your site, and you capture that lead. I mean, that's really the whole idea of it: is to drive traffic to your site. Mm -hmm. so yeah. You want to capture that lead. All those folks on your on your all your followers on social media, you need to have all of their emails because that is the only way you are going to hundred percent reach them yeah and what's the best way to do that have awesome content consistent content share it on your social uh, once people come to your site uh, have some sort of pop-up where you click to get their email so they can subscribe and keep nourishing that relationship through great content and so that's really the way to do that and we've spent so many years saying follow my you know uh, like like me on Facebook, uh, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. That's great, but the problem is all those websites you do not own, right? Unless you're, you know, a shareholder, <laughs> I mean, you really don't own those sites, right? So you're putting all this work and effort, and I did it. I mean, f from starting from way back when, I started some of these websites and, and have thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of followers, and then Facebook's like, nope you can't reach those followers unless you pay us. And you're like, but they're my followers. I work to get every single follower. And really what we all should have been doing is building up those email lists. Because so, so you have great content on your social platforms now, you drive them back to your site, you capture their email, and now they're your follower. They're not Instagram followers. They're not your LinkedIn followers, they're yours. And what and do you do once you, you have the email? And so once you, what do you do when you have the email? Yeah. Newsletter, when you have a blog, whatever you have to share, that's what you do with that email. So whenever you have something that's worth, you know, that person's time, whatever they're interested in, 
and you know using Google Analytics will help you with that. But um, you know whatever type of all, all the platforms have different analytics that they can kind of tell you what your followers are interested in. Then you you know follow up with an email. So whether that's a newsletter, a monthly email, whatever it may be. Right, you're so, in some form of advertising for what yeah what you do and why you want why you want them to work with you. Okay, so Howard Klein uh, from CRE Radio and TV asks a interesting question mm -hmm. and uh, he may have a bit of a vested interest in this since he's uh, starting mm -hmm. to do this himself he wants to know what do you think about live streaming I love live streaming yeah I think it's awesome um, I think it's uh, I think it's probably not everybody's um, yeah. I guess live stream, I, live stream with yeah. a point live stream with a point don't yeah. have it be just like lollygagging online. That's still boring. Um, yeah. And also, you know, I would, my rule about that live streaming is definitely still understand that you're presenting yourself. Um, mm -hmm. I know that there's a lot of people who are like, just do it, just get on there. And that's fine, but you should always remember that you are representing either your brand mm -hmm. or your product. So you still mm -hmm. need to be professional and, mm -hmm. you know, have a gra have a real solid grasp of what you're doing and 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 yeah. look like you're doing a presentation for your business. Don't yeah. Just, it, it, there needs know. to be an agenda. There needs to be agenda. Yeah. Yeah. You never like want to just wing it, unless no. you're really good at that. But you know, most of us aren't. So I shouldn't. I don't like, think anybody really my really walk wings in the park it. with my dog is what you're kind of telling me. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Tell. <laughs> well, I don't know. That might that might go dog, viral because right? there's a dog. There's a dog involved. <laughs> there's a dog involved. But I mean, again, don't don't confuse you running a business with you know being a socialite influencer. You know, there's different there's different mm -hmm. uses for social media. And when you're building a business, you know, you mm -hmm. do want to still have a, a level of professionalism about that, and yeah. and a level of like there's a point to what I'm doing, not just right. like scrolling, you know, I know that, you know, the really cool influencers do nothing and they, you know, make millions, but that's probably not what your goal is when, no, you, when no, you're no. working on building your personal brand in a professional business industry. Exactly. And, and that's the thing is like, you need, uh, Howard said it perfect, said you need to have a purpose, right? And, and it does take a lot of work. So live streaming is important, but you really have to have a plan and, and have it together. You know, you don't want to. You don't want to just start live streaming and, you know, does don't this, fly is, by the is this on? Is this, yeah, no, 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 no. Right. not in our industry. No, it needs to be buttoned mm -hmm. up for sure. Yeah. yeah, in our industry specifically. You know, other industries you can, you know, moms can get on and have wine Wednesdays, and you know, it's fun. But in our industry, it's just a different, a different situation. It's kind of hard to have the charisma to to pull off uh, a show about nothing. Uh, Absolutely. That's yeah. That's why it's important to if you're going to do something like that, talk about what you know and what you feel passionate about. That way, it'll be completely natural and it won't be forced. Yeah. Um, Kenton Johnson uh, says he likes having uh, something printed to refer to before or after a video, and. Yeah. So I think that's a, a that's a great point. That's a really good point. I would I recommend rehearsing whatever you're doing. Like you are giving a presentation, you know. Yes, it's, it shouldn't feel robotic or forced, as Sarah said. But again, you want it to be. You want to come off as prepared and and fresh and crisp, not like mm -hmm. you don't know what you're doing because you're representing your brand and you want Absolutely. as one of the as one of our people said, you want to establish credibility and trust. So. How you present yourself is how people are going to say, mm -hmm. this is how this brand is, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I think we kind of covered this question, but uh, I think it's a good point to uh, reiterate if we, we did. And that's really which social media do you think is best? I mean, first of all, a lot of us who are going to do it ourselves, we don't necessarily have the time to be everywhere do you have to be everywhere mm -hmm. or can you pick one or two and really work those yeah so i saw somebody asked about twitch in the comments yeah. and i love that question because it's it was almost like when snapchat came up it was like should i be on snapchat 
the key is being where your audience is, right? So if you feel comfortable and you know your audience is on LinkedIn, start there, right? And really create content, like kind of get your social media chops up on one platform and then expand from there. Our audience is on LinkedIn, they're on Instagram, they're on Twitter, and they're on Facebook. So I, I know you guys would love for me to say they're just on LinkedIn, so just do that, but that's just not the case. Yeah. So, um, so the, and, the, and the, the other thing you can do is if you're on Twitter, you can share the same content. I mean, it's, it's you know, sometimes you want to have different content for di different platforms, but it's completely acceptable to start that way. And again, it's all about just getting comfortable and just start sharing content and then be consistent in engaging with influencers. There's, there's a great um, commercial that Adobe put out um, about kind of jumping on to like the coolest, um, I'm actually, can we, can we share that video? It's actually really entertaining. Um, can, you, can you do that on GoTo? I can do it or you can do it. Uh, tell me what you... Uh... Um, I just put the link in the comments. Okay. Oh, I don't uh, know if, if sound, okay. sound works, but... Let me see. Uh... All right, it's a great example of, of you know, being like, oh, there's this new social network I need to jump on because there's millions on it. Well, okay, hang on, hang not on. necessarily. I am going to. I think I got it. Hold on. Let's see if it changes. Uh, no, I got. Uh, if not, we can send it out in the, the notes or whatever. But again, it's a great video because it's like, you know, people are really excited about this new social network and just as fast as it came, as fast as it can die. I mean, um, oh, here we go. There we go. Okay. Yo, bro, you on woo woo? You kidding me? Everybody's on woo woo. Let's get them involved. We need an evidently <laughs> ambiguous woo-woo mascot. We're cashing in the Q4 budget, people. And we're buying some followers. <laughs> yeah! one of the best commercials ever for exactly that question of like, should I be on the latest, coolest network? You know, sometimes in, sometimes most of the time is no, especially in our industry. Like if, if your audience isn't there, you're wasting your time and time is money in real estate and you have to make sure that you're spending your time properly. And, um, and again, social media is a necessity now. It's not something that's, you know, just something you should have on the side or you should make sure you have a, a, an account you know, here and there, you need to be doing it right. You need to have a strategy. You need to have goals and objectives. And if you're not talking about your brand, somebody else is, and you need to be leading that conversation, telling people who you are or who your company is. Right. It's no different than when you, you know, as a company, if you hire an ad agency, you go in and say, this is what we want to um, get across. This, this is, you know, what we want people to know about us. And they then build you your, you know, your campaign. That, that is what happens on social media every day. It's small campaigns over and over and over again. And you have people crafting those, those messages and those images and all those things to, to show people over and over again, this is who we are, this is what we think, this is what we do, we're here for you. You keep saying it over and over, but it is, it is advertising today. And you need a team to do it, 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think that is a great uh, thought to end on is that um, re repetition and consistency are really the key, I think. Yes, and, absolutely. All right. Well, this has been a great hour. I can't believe it's flown by already. If people want to get in touch with you, Sarah and Amanda, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? 
Um, I would say our email, right? Sarah at thecontentfunnel.com. That's Sarah. With Amanda. Yep, sorry. Sarah with an H. My wife, Sarah without an H. So I just kind of got to point you, that thank out. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and Amanda at the Content Funnel. Um, and you can always find us online as well. You can reach the Content Funnel on any of the social media platforms. And uh, what about your own social media handles? Um, Instagram is about Sarah Malcolm. And on Twitter, it's Mrs. Sarah Malcolm. And then LinkedIn, just Sarah Malcolm. And then I'm sure you don't want to go on my Facebook page because it's just pictures of my kids. Who are super <laughs> And mine is um, Amanda Sell CT. And that's on um, LinkedIn and Facebook. Excellent. Well, thank you both. And thank you to uh, all of our uh, participants today. You really were participants today and that makes for a great conversation and we'll be I know this is fun we got to do this again we will be sending out uh the link to the video this afternoon and uh, look on monday on both the quantum listing blog and it'll be on the news funnel uh for the summary of our conversation so because you want to share it with all your friends uh Thank you again, everybody. It was a lot of fun. Thanks. All right, bye -bye. Thank you.